Well, it's 11 p.m. Do you know what the F is on Steve's turntable? Well, a cursory examination reveals that it's Bessie Smith, the world's greatest blues singer. This is a double LP. I paid nine bucks for this. It's like in really good shape. It sounds great. The little, the plastic cover it was in, somebody wrote um, that it includes the libretto. Uh, I don't know what kind of sissy talk that is. Uh, where I come from, those, those are called liner notes. And it has really cool notes. It's got a little book in here and some notes from uh, John Hammond, which means, of course, it's, it's on Columbia. And crazy thing is, it tells you in these notes that, uh, so she, she cuts, a uh, 180 tracks ever in her career for Columbia. <clears throat> so they go to remaster this stuff, you know, to put these LPs out and, uh, so 20 of them are lost, just gone forever, which leaves 160. So they put these things out. This one here is her first 16 songs and her last 16. And uh, the idea was, you know, it's eight per side, 16 per LP. It's 10 LPs, five double LPs. And the idea was you, you stack all 10 of these things up and it would, and you play them all, then flip them over. So you would hear everything she ever did in chronological order. Um, back in the day, that if you wanted to binge something, that's how you had to do it. So you'd stack up um, All Things Must Pass or Wings Over America, and it'd play sides one, two, three. Then you flip the whole thing over and it'd play four, five, six. But um, what kind of turntable could ever handle 10 slabs of vinyl? I don't know. But it's a cool concept. I only got this one. I would love to find some more of them. So this is. New York, it's Harlem. She's from Chattanooga, spent most of her career, a lot of her career in New York. So it's not Piedmont and it's not Delta stuff. It's got a um, little bit more of a, a jazz feel to it, kind of ragtimey. These songs, there's, there's always at least a, a pianist on it. And that's often a cat named uh, Clarence Williams who's a great player, but then a lot of times there's, there's a cornet, there's a full band sometimes. Uh, Benny Goodman's on some of these. So the ones, the later ones from the 30s, you know, the recording's a little bit better. I'll hang out down here at night, uh, you know, shooting pool, and you like really kind of get the feeling that she's just like right in the room with you. It's weird. This stuff's basically a hundred years old at this point, so it's like you know she's singing across time. It's kind of creepy, kind of cool. So these tunes, you know, it's it's more sophisticated than uh, Delta stuff. The chord chord progressions are, and the melodies are. So she's got room to to stretch out a little bit. And she's like never reaching. She's like in total control. These melodies, if you like uh, Janis Joplin beyond her radio hits, you probably heard some of these songs and some of these melodies. And she very clearly got a lot of her phrasing and style from Bessie Smith. Um, just great great melodies and she is a phenomenal singer it's it's so expressive it's so cool um some of the songs there's one called aggravating papa that i like a lot uh there's one called uh taint nobody's business enough to do maybe you've heard that one um it's one called uh bring me a pig foot she says bring me a pig foot and a bottle of beer it's kind of hard to picture uh like freaking Beyonce singing something like that. <laughs> um, 
And some of the stuff, you know, it's, it's kind of jarring. She'll say things like, um, I'd rather have my daddy haul off and hit me than to have him hop a ride and quit me. Uh, she's always singing about her daddy and her papa. Um, she has like tremendous range, by which I mean emotional range. Uh, a lot of these are drinking, partying songs, and a lot of them are, you know, lying and cheating and heartbreak songs. Um, when when she starts in with that, that Oh, Daddy. Oh, Daddy. She, uh, you cannot mistake the, the heartache in her voice. She's just super expressive singer. Just, it's... It's the kind of thing that just with computers and auto-tune is, is just, you just don't hear stuff like this anymore. I cannot overstate what a brilliant, brilliant singer she is. Um, and if you don't know, it did not end well for Bessie Smith. Um, the stories is kind of like a Robert Johnson thing. It, this, this, there's so many different versions. It becomes kind of apocryphal. But uh, she got into a bad car wreck in a uh, you know Bumble F Mississippi, um, Coahoma. So speaking of Robert Johnson, that's near uh, Friars Point in West Helena. All that kind of stuff. And so. Did they refuse her admission to the White Hospital? Did she have to wait an hour for the uh, quote-unquote colored ambulance to show up? Or would they not transfuse her with white blood? Or was she just so badly injured that she just really had no chance? Uh, the details may just be kind of lost to history, but... Uh, she got a raw deal, and it sucks because um, this, it's hard to describe the, the feeling that I get listening to this. Um, just a remarkable, remarkable singer. There's just nothing like this going on today. Um so if you see one of these LPs, snatch it up. And, you know, I'm sure it's online. She's somebody that uh, when people talk about, uh, you know, the kind of the warmth and the depth and the timber that you get from vinyl and that you don't get from digital stuff, uh, her voice is one that, that you can really hear the difference. Um, just an incredible singer. And if, if you're not familiar with it, um, I cannot recommend it enough.